Okay, more of the pollination um, videos. It's about 6.30, what is it, June 22nd or something, 2018. And I'm opening the flower before, I'm forcing it open before evening or dark. And let's see, this is uh, Lisa. The least of the Costa Recensis. Let's see if the pollen dust shows up. Oh, it doesn't show like I want it to. Let's see here. Try a little bit. Oh, can you see it on my dirty thumbs there? All the dust, not the pollen, but the. Uh, there it is. Okay, that's the pollen, not the pollen sacks. At the pollen itself. Okay, you can feel it. Um, it's a little bit grainy. I'm gonna go in here now. And just um, get that out with uh, that portable vacuum I showed on the previous video. Of course, I had my friend Mary holding the camera. Oh, let's see. Okay, so that's the Lisa, and uh, right next to it here I have some sugar dragon. And I actually already took the pollen from this one. Right here, there were two here. Now, I typically do not pollinate my sugar dragon. Um, I don't really eat them. I give them away or whatever I do with them. There's one that didn't take, and here's one that did. You know, the bees come in. I don't get all the pollen. So the bees come in, and they, they fertilize these uh, flowers, and they set. The Lisa, on the other hand, if I do not um, hand pollinate them with something like sugar dragon pollen, they'll abort. They, they need me to come in and hand pollinate tomorrow. Now, I'm collecting Lisa pollen. If I only had Lisa pollen and I was applying it to itself, then again they would abort because it's not receptive to its own pollen. It's not self-fertile. So... It needs that outside pollen. Now all these here, these wilted flowers, they opened last night, and I collected the pollen yesterday at this time. Now, let me put down my um, vacuum and just walk and talk a little bit. So, um, I collected the two different pollen in the same vacuum. It's mixed. Now, this here is American Beauty. And um, the problem, one of the problems with American Beauty is it's... it's Gets, um, it's sensitive to cold and sensitive to heat. So you see that chlorosis on there? And, and that's a um, devigorating condition, right? No chlorophyll, no uh, carbohydrate, no vigor. So I'm still getting fruit set, but it would get much better fruit set if it were in a uh, more tropical area where... Uh, the cold and the heat didn't damage the plant itself. It would just uh, thrive better in that climate. This climate's not suitable or ideal. So, um, the pollen from the Lisa and from the Sugar Dragon are both good on the um, American Beauty. 
Oh, there's an assortment of different varieties in here. This one, we all know, this one is physical graffiti. And <clears throat> I pollinated these flowers this morning with Lisa and Sugar Dragon. Actually, Lisa and American Beauty mix pollen. I didn't have any Sugar Dragon yesterday. And um, that's what I wanted to mention this, in this video, was that uh, although I'm not a big fan of either of those two varieties, Lisa, it's, some people like it. Uh, it's the, you know, Costa Ricensis, so it's thorny. It stains. Um, it's good size. It uh, holds up well in the refrigerator. I, I like to think of it as a uh, salad fruit. But uh, aside from that, it's not super sweet. It's not like the Guatemalensis with bricks of 20. It's probably, uh, it's a 15, 15 and a half, 16 max, something like that. Maybe some people get 17, but rarely. It doesn't taste like a 17 bricks fruit. And um, so even though I'm not a big fan of the Lisa and the Sugar Dragon, I have to admit that having these two varieties alone will probably be about the most ideal for pollen uh, because they come in early, they're very prolific, they have a lot of pollen, they tend to augment the, each other. So like I said, last uh, Lisa's window of flowering is shorter uh, than um, Sugar Dragon. Sugar Dragon is a staple uh, pollen source, especially for American Beauty that comes in early. Um, but, um, but when it's not flowering, when the Sugar Dragon's not flowering, then uh, you, you have, interestingly, uh, at a different timing, Lisa. At least that's the way it's worked for me here. And in my experience is that if it has a variation in seasonality. I call it seasonality. In this case, it's a seasonality of flowering, flower time, flower opening time. Um, that seasonality actually persists, that you'll find it year in and year out. So over the years, I find that if uh, one of my varieties, Glow, comes to maturity for, say, four days before, say, my Jade, uh, and then my jade comes in three or four days before my praise. The next year it does it, the next year it does it, and the following year it does it. So I find that every single year I get the same sequential flowering times relative to each other. So I expect that next year, just like from this year, that I'll get um, this sugar dragon and Lisa timing that is um, sequential and works actually ideally for my needs in terms of pollinating, hand pollinating the few varieties that I do hand pollinate.